Now that the football season is over, I've kind of taken a step back and I've been looking at how I want to organize my off-season content. And one of the things I came across was the behind-the-scenes interviews I did prior to the season kicking off, interviewing some of the uh, more influential people in the fantasy football space, right? Some of the bigger innovators and just influencers overall. And I kind of thought about something and I was like, as the new year approaches, first of all, happy new years. I, I feel like a lot of people are probably going to start maybe creating their own content in 2019. So I thought I would kind of help you out and give you a little bit, a little bit of help. If you are starting a podcast or a YouTube channel, whatever it is, right? Something that Gary V brought up recently in one of his podcasts, and he's been talking about it a little bit recently, and it's fucking brilliant to be honest with you. And when I thought about it, I was like, wow, that's actually something I kind of did. He calls it like the high school party theory. When you're in high school, right, you have... The popular kids, you have the not so popular kids, right? And then you have everyone in the middle. We'll, we'll call it Gen Pop. This is the majority of people. In high school, there's always a couple people, right? There's always one or two kids that are able to throw the parties, right? They're the ones throwing down. Their parents would say some shit like, yeah, I'd rather you just have all the kids drinking here so you guys aren't like alone by yourself and, and killing yourselves with alcohol. So you'd have one or two kids that would always be able to throw the parties, right? Some of those kids would already be popular, so it was irrelevant, but a lot of the times it was people in the middle. And those people, what would happen is they would throw the parties Parties. As they started throwing the parties, the popular kids started coming to the parties, right? And once that happened, that person who was throwing the fiesta started getting more and more popular until he was friends with the popular kids. High school is a really fucked up time, to be honest with you. What happens is you start associating yourself with the popular kids, you eventually become popular, right? He kind of refers it to the same cycle in, in content, right? So if you're starting off, you're not gonna be a popular podcaster, right? No one's really gonna know who you are, but one of the ways you can kind of break through, because in the beginning it can be fucking frustrating as hell, right? You might throw up five or 10 episodes of a podcast and get two listens, three listens, zero listens on one of them, and you're like, fuck, this isn't gonna work. So you might need a new strategy. Sometimes it just takes time and consistency and things to slowly build up, right? That might be the case. You also might suck and it might not work out. One of the ways that you can kind of build up and one of the ways that you can start to see a little bit of traction is by taking the high school party theory. What you do, you start to invite on the popular kids who are the industry experts. And this will work for any fucking industry, seriously. If you are a videographer, if you're a video animations person, find the top guys in your industry, right? And start interviewing them about how they became the top guys, about what their passions are, all that kind of stuff, right? Because people that are in your field, the people that watch this type of content or enjoy this type of content are eventually gonna start looking at you as an industry expert because you are hanging around with the popular kids. You know what I'm saying? You start reaching out to these people and it's not gonna be easy for you to get all these guys on, but if you start reaching out to the top guys in the industry, eventually you're gonna get one or two and then it kind of starts steamrolling. And that's exactly what happened to me with the behind the scenes of the fantasy football industry like interview thing, right? I got Andy Holloway of the fantasy footballers. The guy has a massive social reach. He had no fucking reason for him to come onto my channel. Now, me and Andy DM on Twitter and like talk I'm not gonna say frequently, but probably like bi-weekly, a couple times a month, right? And that's a great connection for me to have because they're literally, I think, the best brand in the industry. But these are the type of things you do. Go on Twitter, go on Instagram, and start DMing these people. But make sure that you're able to give them value of some sort, right? Not everyone's gonna be like, yeah, okay, let's go onto this kid's channel with zero followers. What does it get to me? What I was able to, uh, to offer them was, since YouTube is a unique platform for fantasy, I would say, it's not very saturated, I was able to pretty much give them a new audience, right? If I have 13,000 subscribers and they're only blogging or on podcasts or Twitter, that's gonna be a completely different audience than the people that are watching videos on YouTube. So I was like, listen, I have a lot of audience members that could get to know you better um, if you come on. And that was the value prop for me. You have to think of what value prop uh, for them that you can offer, right? And don't offer money, that's spammy, that's fucking corny, don't do that kind of stuff. But figure out what it is. And some people are just nice. Some people, if you reach out to 15 people, maybe one of them will just be like, yeah, sure, I'll come on, why not? So that's what you gotta do. Go on Twitter, see, see whose DMs are open, go on Instagram, start DMing people and eventually you'll get someone. Once you start racking up these more popular people, you'll eventually start to be known within the space and that will give you a lot of leverage, right? And that will help you start growing and that's how you start the networking and that's how you start getting these relationships. And just for like SEO purposes, if you do a YouTube interview or whatever and I'm able to put, you're able to put someone who's really popular in the space in the, the title, right? That's, that's gonna get organic traction by itself. So that's one tip. The high school party theory is uh, a great way of starting to help you grow your content 
strategy platform, whatever it may be, podcast, YouTube, whatever. So this isn't the technicalities behind starting a podcast. Literally just go to buzzsprout.com. The rest is very easy if you want to start a podcast, but this is something that could help you grow. And this is a strategy behind it. And you know, if you enjoyed this, this is all the type of shit I talk about during my vlogs that I try to put out like bi-weekly. It's all business behind the scenes kind of shit like this. So um, go check those out if you haven't seen them yet. And thank you for listening, I guess. Happy New Year's.